are Susan Cody, Susan Cody, um, Chris Anteo, Don Carvo, um, I'm Donna Valenti, acting chairperson, and um, Debbie Pelletier is our clerk. Um, before we begin the meeting, um, we do have a statement that I need to read. Pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. And our um, meeting is being recorded and um, aired on um, through Fall River TV on, and on Facebook. Um, okay, um, first order of business is election of offices. Do I have any nominations? I nominate I'll Donna nominate. for president. I'll second yeah, that. Man. I'll second the nomination for president. Okay, can we have a roll call? Yes, we can. Um, do this properly. Uh, Mr. Anteo. Yes. Uh, Dr. Carvo. Yes. Ms. Cody. Yes. Mrs. Valente. I guess I have to say yes. <laughs> it's unanimous. And we need a um, a coach, uh, an assistant chair. Is that what we need, Debbie? An assistant it's chair. It's not necessary, but you can if you would like, just in case. Okay. Um, could I have a motion to for election of an assistant chair? And I'd like to nominate Susan Cody. Second. All in favor? Oh, no. Roll call? Uh, roll call. Ms. Dantea? Yes. Uh, Dr. Co uh, Dr. Carvo? Yes. Ms. Cody? Yes. Mrs. Valente? Yes. And a motion to um, for the Office of Treasurer. I nominate Dr. Carvo. I second that. All in, uh, Mrs. Uh, Yes. <laughs> Mr. Anteo? Yes. Dr. Caravo? Yes. Ms. Cody? Yes. Mrs. Valente? Yes. Okay, our next order of business is approval of the meet, uh, minutes from the February 2nd meeting. Can I have a motion to accept those minutes? I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes of the meeting. Second? Second. Roll call. Mr. Anteo? Yes. Uh, Dr. Carvo? Yes. Ms. Cody? Yes. Mrs. Valente? Yes. Unanimous. Okay. Minutes have been approved. Um, number three on the agenda is a request from Little Theater to modify their 2021 grant application due to the fact that they were unable to hold their um, proposed um, performance as approved by us last year. Um, and I think everybody's had a chance to look at this. Debbie sent it out to us. Can I have a mo motion to modify the 2021 grant application from Little Theater? I make a motion that we accept the proposal. I'll second the uh, motion. Any discussion? Okay, can we have a roll call, Mrs. Pelletier? Mr. Antea? Yes. Dr. Carlo? Yes. Ms. Cody? Yes. Mrs. Valente? Yes. Um, next order of business is um, a request from Jim Manning for an extension. Um, we re received a um, backup letter from um, David Mello in the Fall River Public Library um, supporting his extension. Could I have a motion to um, approve the extension? I'll make a motion that we approve the extension. Second? I'll second it. Any discussion? Okay. Um, Mr. Mr. Pelletier? Antonio? Yes. Dr. Carvo? Yes. Ms. Cody? Yes. Mrs. Valente? Yes. Okay, moving right along. Um, review of applications for the 2022 grant cycle. Um, applicant number one is Brooke Baptiste for Reggae on West Beach. 
Do you have any discussion? I believe the project is outside of Fall River, which would not meet our local guidelines. That was my thought as well. I agree. So these are provisional um, amounts that we're discussing now, correct? Correct. What we'll do is we'll discuss provisional amounts and then at the end we'll, we'll take a, um, rather than go through them one at a time, this way we can go back and amend as we go along mm -hmm. if we have more funding um, available. And then at the end, we will take a, a roll call on, on the um, proposals. So Is that agreeable? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Okay. So the final vote will be toward the end, but for now I propose zero funding. I agree. Any more I discussion? Agree. Nope, not with me. Okay. Question, it's out of the area. It's out of the city at that guideline. Yes. That's not beneficial to the uh, Fall River community. Okay, I'll use that. I'll use the, let me scroll down here. Um, let me see. It is, sorry not, guys, my computer is not, this project does not play, take place in Fall River and does not guarantee public benefit for its citizens. That one? Yes. Correct. Right. Sounds like a fun, a fun project, but it's not in Fall River. Uh, Mr. Entail? Uh, I approve the zero funding on that one. Dr. Kerr, oh no, we're gonna do that later. I'm sorry, I okay. apologize. No worries. That's okay. I'm getting That's roll call okay. happy. <laughs> Number two, um, Charles Boucher, New Horizons. I kind of um, look at number two and three together. And I was just gonna, I was just gonna ask yeah. that question if we could look at two and three together. Um, number three is um, by Charles Boucher also, and it's Crossroads and Trees. Yeah, and I, I would recommend two thousand as an individual artist. Oh, excuse me. We have to take each grant application on it as its own individual application. That's our Mass Cultural Council guidelines. Correct. So let's pick one and a lot zero and 2000 to the other one. Well, that was my thought, um, John, because if you look at them, it looks like they're both an individual artist. And in one, in one, the um, timeline is January 22 to September 22. And the other one is March of 22 to November of 22. So I think you're right. So maybe we should take the first one, New Horizons, and do we want to approve him as an individual artist for $2,000? Sure. I agree. Which means you're denying the third grant. What do I use for a reason that's in our guidelines? Can, is there something about more than one application, Debbie? Absolutely not. They can send as many as they want. And I have been telling anyone who's contacted me that. Didn't we uh, agree on last meeting, I thought, or the, or the prior meeting to that, to, to only fund one application per artist or organization? No? No. no we, when we got more money, we changed that. I got it. Yeah. Because we have more money. Alternative idea, it would be a thousand for a project number one as an individual artist and a thousand for the next project as an individual artist. Okay. We could do that. We could do that. So if we look at New Horizons, a um, thousand dollars for New Horizons and then go on to Crossroads and Trees. Yes. And yeah. again, I agree, he's applying as an individual artist and I would say a thousand dollars. I agree with that. Okay, moving on to number four. Um, 
Cambodian community of Fall River, the mass of Sarah dance troupe, they're looking for $12,400. Um, this is going to be a long speech, I think, for a moment. Um, I'm having trouble with the proposal. We have a long history of supporting different cultures and including Cambodian dance troops. And in spite of proposals that were sketchy at times, we gave them the benefit of the doubt because of, of language issues. But this proposal I feel is very inadequate. They describe an intent of 30 performances, but there are no dates, there are no venues. It's, a, I believe it's an organization that we funded before. There are no pictures, no documentations here in this proposal of what they did. So it's difficult to look at a track record. They also list the fact that dancers get a small stipend and I don't know what that stipend is. I'm going to recommend that we reach out to them and offer help in developing more adequate proposals. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah, there is no place in that, even on their budget page, Don, you're, you know, I couldn't find anything that talked about the stipend and how much the stipend was. Um, it sounds like they have, um, as many teachers as they do performers. It, did, it does say performance stipends for teachers and musicians and performers, but it doesn't break it down into exactly how much. Right. And just as a point of information, we have not funded this group before. We have not. We have, we have not, this is the other group. Okay. Because so I was, I'm sorry. Um, one of the things that I did notice that it said uh, regarding the where the project will take place, Fall River and surrounding area, but again, there's no there's no other locations that are going to show that the Fall River community they're going to benefit from this because we don't know where it's going to be exactly, and again, we don't have the dates. <clears throat> and we. We, we require at least that information, dates, and confirmations of venues for all other applicants. I think we need to be consistent. I agree. So was the recommendation to not fund this pr proposal? Yes. At this time? Yes. Okay. And Debbie, I think, you know, the dates and times is, is definitely one of the um, stipulations that they need yes. to provide dates and times. All right, so you dates want and venues. Our priority eight specifically dates and venues in your project were not stated. Correct. Okay, um, number five, Kristen Chin, Snow Money. Again, um, any discussion here? Again, not a local project. Not a local project. No. Okay. So that's a zero. Debbie, do you have that? Not a local. No, not a local project. Number three. Yep. Okay. Uh, number six, co-creative center, um, co-creative sessions. Again, I'm not clear how our community would be involved. Um, no specific plan to target for river rights. Um, a quote from the proposal is that they're embracing the pulse that makes New Bedford so unique. I don't think that's helping Fall River. No, you're right. There's nothing near to our benefit. So Maybe this is one that we reach out to them as well. They do some good work over there, but 
you're right. So if they had some sort of roadmap to connect Fall River artists, I'd be willing to support them. But you're right in your exact uh, quote, Don. It, it clearly looks like a copy and pasted from a new effort application. So, right. yeah. But maybe we reach out to them and let them know if they did have a clear cut you know, avenue to, to affect our artists here locally. They do some really good work there. Mm -hmm. sure. You know, and they, they've had different programs, but they don't really specifically say whether or not there's been any local um, participation from, from the Fall River culture, um, cult, you know, cultural um, community. Okay, so that's a zero. Uh, next one is, uh, Edward Cope, Sea Life Balloon Animal Twisting Workshop at the Fall River Public Library. Um, I recommended that we do full funding. Um, I concur. I agree. This is supported by, um, you know, the people from the, the folks from the Fall River Public Library. So I, I recommended full funding on that one. I'd even like to reach out to them and maybe somewhat try to support them from Nome as well, since it's Sea Life. Well, if, um, kind of skipping ahead a little bit, but um, I guess that's one of the things that they're focusing on at the public library this year is sea life. Cool. So, Chris, you might be <laughs> might be interested in, in some you know work, working with them. So that'd be good. Okay, so four fifty four sea life. Um, next one, Nancy Cody, everyday life in Fall River. I want to mention she's not related to me. Okay. <laughs> so what's your recommendation susan <laughs> <laughs> let me look at my notes here um let's see she doesn't have an exact date as far as the spring and, and summer just mentioning it on the other hand you know we're, we're looking at something that's going to pull a lot of the uh locations on the waterfront Mm -hmm. As far as the, the Maritime Museum, the Battleship, Heritage State Park, um, this is saying, that, you know, she's estimating 400 people to be served, but I think it could be a lot more than that because of everything that's involved down the waterfront. There are so many different people there that are always there. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think that it's a great idea. Um, I would just like to see a little bit more maybe documentation from her. I was thinking of individual artists then. I, I was as well. That was my thought too, was um, an individual artist um, because it seems that's what she's doing. It seems like she has a studio down at the Narrow Center. And I think, you know, that opening her studio where, you know, she could um, key in on some drop-ins and, and looking at the different... Um, the arts festival and the Spindle City Fest, et cetera. I think, you know, that that seems, I know where she doesn't have specific dates, so, but I think that seems to be her intention is to take part in in those those events. Okay. Then I'll agree as far as a stipend for her. And we pretty much use 2000 as the max for individual artists. So that's what I would recommend. That was, that was my recommendation as well. Chris? Yep. I'll go okay. with that. Okay. Um, Creative Arts ne Network, History Comes Alive. I'm a little confused by the proposal. Uh, at one point they mentioned that there will be a fee, the performance will be $25 per person. And I didn't see dates for specific performances. I would be interested in, in helping to fund the interpretive boards, but I wish there was more info and cost estimates for that. Right, right. <clears throat> Debbie, uh, we funded them last year for some interpretive boards, am I correct? I believe we did, I can look it up in a minute. Now there will, there will be some performers. So one thought I had would be, 3,500, the stipulation that is for the performers, that's what was requested. Right. Sorry, my computer is slow. Um, 
you know, I do have a note here too that she, uh, when the, the application was completed, um, there is an error in it that they were asking for zero money. Uh, the way it was written up on the spreadsheet, amount requested, it's you know it had uh, project uh, budget in the column seventy three hundred dollars, amount requested no, that, zero. No, you're, you're looking at the wrong one, Susan. Um, number nine, oh. number nine, Creative oh, Arts Network. I'm sorry, I jumped. No, no that's okay. That's okay. Um, no, they're asking for twelve five. You're right. I jumped. That's okay. Last so year, they, I, last year their project was open air and art culture, and we awarded them six thousand. Yeah, I was looking. I was looking at, at the same lines Don was looking at for the salaries okay. and for the performers. But I agree with Don. There doesn't seem to be any kind of dates or or timelines as far as when these performances would take place. And I know that they want it on this one here, they wanted to do the billboard, correct? Correct. No, not the billboard. That was, yeah, you did jump ahead. Interpret you did jump ahead. They wanted yes, interpretive did. boards. Yes. Part of it was to have some interpretive boards. But there's no information on, or I believe, on the cost of those boards. No, and I, that was why I didn't know if they were still doing the, the boards from last year um and it says you know the but they're because they talk about the boards from last year um and then they talk about the performances will take place at venues in the district but it doesn't say when or where which is why i would like to see a stipulation if we agree to pay for the performers well the only way they would get paid Debbie, if, I, um, if I'm not mistaken, is if they provided proof of performances. Am I correct? Proof of, they have to provide proof of performances, but if you put a stipulation, then I can only, I only submit to Don um, the amount of the performances. Right. If, if there's less than they're, they're awarded in what they paid performers, then I send that to Don and he usually rejects it. Okay. So if we if we gave them 3,500 for performances and they didn't have a performance. They'd get only, oh, for the performers, is that what? Yes. yes. If they pay, if they, we gave them 3,500 for performers and they only paid, I'll say 2,000 for performers, they would only get the 2,000. Correct, correct. Well, because I'm looking at I'm looking at all the other expenses in their budget, and that I'm questioning some of the things that we you know we certainly can't pay for insurance or permits or anything like that. So our office supplies, miscellaneous gift bags, mm -hmm. um, marketing. So I'm thinking that the only thing that we could pay for would be performers. Am I right? Yes. So I recommend 3,500 for performers. Chris? I second that, yes. Don? I, yeah, I would agree. We're not voting now, but I agree. Mm. Okay. Susan, you agree? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now, Susan, number 10. <laughs> Are you me? He's the Is expert, Mary, let her lead. Mary Sear, um, Child Mill Workers of Fall River Outdoor Installation. I think that, that it's a nice idea. Um, I would have liked to have seen maybe a few more details as far as you know how she's going to about going to go about accomplishing all of this um it does look like a big big project to put together if i would recommend any um any money 
I'm looking at supplies and materials. They're twenty five hundred dollars. Right. <clears throat> because the rest is rental and technical cost. Um, you know, and part of it, uh, as far as salaries, fees, administrative, they're looking to go to the National Archives to scan our photos. So when I was done reviewing all of the um, expenses and the descriptions, I came up with just the $2,500. Right, right. Um, the other the, the other question I have, and I, I'm not familiar with this process that she's planning on doing, but if this was going to be outside, I'm thinking wheat paste. Is that something that I don't know much about? Yeah, wheat out. paste stays for quite a while. Uh, Does it? Elements eventually start to break it down. It's what you see when you're like in New York City and there's like a, some nice mural that's starting to peel off. That that would be like a wheat pasted. Okay. Because I, I was thinking wheat paste. I'm thinking the first time it rains is. It's no, cold. it creates like a, like kind of like a laminated top over street art so to say but it doesn't last forever it just lasts you know a year max so there's really two ideas that she's presenting the first is to put is to rent a billboard and to place on it photos that were done in the early 1900s by a famous photographer lewis hine who focused on child labor. I don't know that I want Fall River <laughs> to have that pasted all over. You know, it is a part of Fall River's history, but to put it on a billboard, I, I had mixed feelings. The second idea she had was to put some of these with the wheat paste on windows of an old factory. And she gave an example in her proposal of what that might look like. Mm -hmm. The weakness with that idea is that she doesn't have a specific agreement with an owner of such a building. Right. But I thought of an individual artist stipend. Okay. I think I think that's a that's a good that's a good idea. I'm I'm just concerned, you know. I'm I was concerned with the, I had the same concerns you did, Don, with the um, permission to do this and how much um, the billboard. You know, I agree with you about the you know is this how you want to promote the city? But um, and what, you know what what message is it is it getting across? But um, I thought her I thought her proposal with the old mill was very interesting. But like you said, um, that's not something she has permission for. I have trouble with that too. If they, if they don't have any specific, you know, documentation that someone's going to let them do that, like what are the chances they're going to actually do it? Right. I would definitely put a stipulation in there that the project has to be completed as stated. Right. Then we yeah. can't. Then we can't deal with it as an individual artist. I got gotcha. you. <clears throat> I don't know if she has a studio. I saw some of her photographic work and I was impressed by it. Yeah, it doesn't say whether or not she has a studio. There's nothing, there's nothing in her presentation that talks about, um, you know, she's had some, she's had some ex exhibits, but there's nothing that says she has a studio. Do you want me to, do you want me to see if we can get from, um, I can I can give her a call and we can um, find out if she has permission from the you know the mill that she was suggesting. Um, she should suggest a specific mill. She did. She did. It was one of the. Um, she was interested in. I know I a closed mill. Uh, here it uh, it didn't say. It just says a closed mill near Father Travasso's Park on Alden Street. She did not specifically say um, a, a particular mill. Because <clears throat> if we give her money as an individual artist, then there's nothing that says she has a, a completed work. Right. 
individual artists must complete their work before they get paid. They must send me proof that the project's been completed. So could we do that then? Could we fund her as an individual artist? And then if she doesn't go through with this installation on the, on the, um, on an old mill, then she doesn't get paid. I'm okay with that. That uh, sounds reasonable. As long as we communicate that we're not interested in supporting the big billboard of uh, child labor. Okay. Yeah, I like I like the presentation that she did with the um, pictures on the old mill. Mm -hmm. but, I did um, too. So individual artists, you want to go with the whole 2000, John? I would be fine with that. Okay. Everybody else? I agree. Okay with Chris? that. Okay. I'm okay with that. Fall River Museum of Contemporary Art Exhibitions Program. They're asking for $5,000. Has anybody been to the Fall River Contemporary uh, to the museum? I haven't. I know that there's always a lot of people going in and out of there, but I have not yet been there. I haven't either. I've seen some of the work they've done. It's pretty. It's good stuff. Yeah, it looks. It looks interesting. It looks interesting. And pictures Definitely contemporary. Of, pictures but. of the museum. Uh, particularly attractive too. They did a yes. really nice job. I've met the both the artists there, the resident artists, and they they're pretty passionate about their work, so on and so forth. And it seems like they've got quite a following outside this community as well. So, <clears throat> the weakness of the proposal is that they mentioned doing two exhibitions, but there's no specific dates or how many days the ex the exhibits would be open. But they also say that they will show at a storefront, but that's not listed either. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to support them though. And yeah, I was looking at I was looking at um, the three thousand dollars, which would be artist fees, um, salaries, fees, educational component. Okay, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that too. I'm, I'm fine with that too. Uh, next one: Fall River Public Library Foundation, Legends of New England. They're looking for five hundred dollars. Full funding. Full funding. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Yes. Debbie, is that Jeff Belanger? Is he the one that's been involved in theater in Fall River for years ago? Or do not believe it's the same Jeff Belanger. I, I could I be just, wrong, but I don't think so. I was just wondering, was the same? I you know I kind of lost track of where what where he was and what he was doing, but I know he was very in, involved in in the. Um, Little theater for it, wasn't he? Yes. No, yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't think this is him though. I think it's another Jeff Blander. Okay. Just wondering. I could be wrong, but I, I agree. Okay. With you, um <laughs> so full funding. Fall next one, fall number 13, Fall River Public Schools, youth art making, curating, sharing, promoting. This had, gets really tricky because it's a school. And do we still have those concerns from the state about funding? Absolutely not. So we don't have those concerns. Okay. Okay. Because uh, that was oh, my wait, it, wait a minute. There is one. I do believe. Let me look up the guideline on that. I think they've taken out in school, but I'm not. Let me look up the guidelines. Well, we could go with, for example, 3000 for the lead curators, which are not teachers in the school system. Oh, if they're not teachers in the school system, then you can fund it. 
right? Am I right in reading that correctly? That the curators um, would be coaching the students. Yeah, I, I wasn't, I wasn't completely clear on this because it talked about teachers being paid through the school system, right? And then it also talked about salaries and fees for the the artists and. The lead teachers at Durfee, uh, they're talking about this Heather Pereira and Barbara Mullen, and it said, and the lead curators, when I was reading it, I was trying to decide whether they were one and the same people. No, it, it, there's a sentence here, the curators of F-R-M-O-C-A, MOCA. Mm -hmm. that's, that the, that's the Fall River that's Contemporary Art. That's the Fall River Art. Contemporary Art, yep. Yeah. Okay, so they're going to work with the Drifty art teachers okay. as visiting lecturers. Yeah, because I would, I had a, I had a quest, an issue with supplying. Um, you know, part of their their budget is for art supplies, and I, you know, I just think the school department should be supplying their own art supplies and not the cultural council. But what if we fund the curators? I think three thousand, for example. Three thousand. I'm good with. For the I'm good with curators. That sounds good. I'm good with that. Because at least they're getting something. Yeah, I was just. My question was, you know, if it's something that has to do with the curriculum. At one point, we couldn't we couldn't fund something if it had to do, if it was curriculum related, but it, that seems to have changed, right, Debbie? It has. All of those guidelines have kind of gone by the wayside. Okay. Okay, uh, the next one, uh, also Fall River Public Schools, Why You Matter. I don't think we can buy cameras. That would be a capital expense that would require matching funds. And who would own the cameras? And what would happen after? And the only other expense there would be um, the posters, buying the poster boards. Is that five ninety nine? That's yes. the five ninety nine. That's what I recommended. Okay, five ninety nine for poster purchase of poster boards. Uh, no. Debbie, did you have a? I'm reading something. I'm thinking that we can't buy school expenses. supplies. Uh, cultural council expenses. They removed the capital. Uh, they removed the capital expense year. thing. Those old, those are guidelines from before. They've removed those. So we could buy, we could buy the digital cameras. Yes. They cut a lot of the guidelines because of COVID. I don't know if I'd want to get into like purchasing cameras though. But no, I I I have an I paying have an artists yeah. and like programming and services. Yes, there's other places for capital grants, in my opinion. I agree, especially to a school system who gets a lot of state money to begin with. Mm -hmm. My opinion. No, I agree. I, 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 I'm struggling with giving them $600 for the poster boards, but I'd like to give them something. Me too, but a uh, mastermind well, over there, that's his recommendation, so I'll back him up. You know what, uh, to be honest, I mean, I agree with Donna. I mean, I am struggling with the um, supplies and materials because we just got through denying someone for $1,000 in art supplies. 
and posters could be construed as art supplies. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. That's so, what I'm saying. I think it's, yeah. it's something that, you know, the school department should be supplying and, and not necessarily us. I, I would rather see our, our money go to other projects. I mean, if we, if we go with the digital cameras, then, you know, maybe can we request that they uh, put some kind of a policy in place as far as, you know, what's going to happen with them after to make sure they stay within the school department and they don't leave the school department? There's a lot of potential fighting between members of the school department. Then. Yeah, I know. We, we might know. be keeping more peace if we don't fund the cameras. Yeah, I would rather not fund the cameras either. So let me make a case for the poster board, though. Yes. In this, in this case, it's going to be um, a thousand pictures of students, faculty, staff people posted throughout the school. I think that helps to promote the arts. Right. Okay. I have less problem. I, you know, even though I still have a problem with it, I have less less problem with that than I do the, the cameras. I do have a problem with spending fourteen hundred dollars on cameras. Mm -hmm. So you want to do the uh, five ninety nine for the uh, poster boards, posters? Okay. okay. Um, Rhonda Fazio, artist in residence, an interwoven heritage. And I recommended two thousand dollars for Rhonda as an individual artist. A stipend. I'm okay with that. The strong letter of support from Heritage State Park on that. Right. And we've supported her in the past, and she does she does do some beautiful work. Mm. Chris, are you all set with that one? Yep. Okay. Uh, next one is also Rhonda Fazio. The Art and Language of Food, um, Snap to the Max. I was less impressed by that one because it's a healthy cause, pun intended, but promoting um, good health is not necessarily in our priorities of promoting the arts. I agree. I agree. I, I had said zero on that. Okay. I, really, I really didn't see where there was. And, and in fact, they have funding from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health. So that shows you the um, area that this falls in. I, yeah, I couldn't, I, you know, I thought, I thought the, the project itself is a, is a very good project. I just wasn't too sure. Um, that it falls under our purveyance. Chris? I agree. I need a reason if you're going to deny it, because it comes under humanities. They claim to, that it's humanities, but I don't agree. I think it's, I, I think it's health not promotion of the arts. I, 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 have, I have to agree. I know, it's un, I know it falls under humanities and I think you know, this, was, this has been an ongoing, this has been an ongoing discussion for many years. If Mitch Machado was still, still here, he, he'd agree with Don, with Don and I, I think. <laughs> Am I right, Debbie? Mm -hmm. But I still need a reason of what one of our guidelines or the state guidelines it violates. Not a top priority. <laughs> That's not one of our denial reasons. Am I right? Absolutely not. We have to go along with what our, our cultural priorities state. Uh, let me go back and review the cultural priorities. Uh. 
We've got our local guidelines here too. And as I'm reading them, I'm seeing that we have a thing for matching funds. Yeah. For, uh, yeah, we do. In our guidelines, I had forgotten about that. That we what? We, we need have matching funds for capital and expenditures. No, I got nothing. Well, I'm just... Um, number two. Uh, number two, priority. All performances by professional artists, humanists, and cultural organizations must take place in Fall River or reflect collaborative partnership with Greater Fall River <clears throat> with a significant benefit to the citizens of Fall River. Last sentence says, preference will be given to Fall River-based artists, humanists, and cultural organizations. So how does that, how do we do a denial based on, on that? That preference was given to Fall River based artists, humanists and cultural organizations. But she, she is a, a Fall River based artist. Yeah, but not this project. Not this project. Will that will that suffice, Debbie? I don't know. So a uh, hypothetical question. So we have X amount of dollars and we have an extraordinarily large number of applications. Um, wouldn't we rank order the applications and what's left would be some non-funded projects? The guidelines say we have to fund, we have to deny based on one of our guidelines or one of the MCC guidelines. <clears throat> and I suggest that we use the argument that we gave preference to other applications because they were more in line with our guidelines. Oh, This is where we might want to take a look at implementing funding one artist, one application, again, one organization, so to say. Then you got to prioritize what you're looking to accomplish. Reading on, number three says the Fall River Cultural Council is particularly interested in projects that will enhance visibility of art and culture in the Fall River community, period. So I just don't see health promotion as fitting into that definition. Does it, say, well, it does say resident, of, her target audience is residents of Fall River. Um, and it's going to take place in the farmer's market. So it, it, it well, is taking. This, this is an issue that should be tackled by, like, I don't know, a health organization, right? That Fall River does have a very high level of diabetes. We're talking about physical health here. Mm -hmm. I can argue that mental health has a 
component in the art, so to say, but physical health, I don't know. I kind of agree with Don. Yeah. I, you know, I think if she was doing something, if she was incorporating some kind of, uh, you know, like she talks about the art and language of food and if she was doing something like that, I, but everything that she has for her um, in her proposal talks about the healthy aspect, not food is mm. an art. I certainly don't deny the importance of the project, um, but there's only so much that we can do. We're not solving all of the poverty in the city. We're not solving all of the housing issues, all of the mental health issues, et cetera, et cetera. They are all worthy causes, but we do have a specific mission. And I don't see where this is in any way promoting the arts. No, it's not. Do you want to put this on hold for now and go back to this? Yeah, let's revisit it. Okay. Okay, um, next one is Frank Sylvia Elementary School Mad Science Carnival Night. And here we go again, Don, with the... Uh, but it's a performance. So there's it's a performance. in the performances. Right, right. I like the project. I do too. I do too. I recommended full funding for this one. Yes. Because the booths seem to, um, if you read further on, um, the booths seem to support what, they, what they're doing in the science shows mm -hmm. and where the, the children are able to create activities. I agree with you. Okay. So 1930. Yes. Okay. Um, number 18, Friends of the Fall River Public Library, Delvina Theater Company. <clears throat> I like the project because it's six completely different productions that will be held in our library. Right, exactly. I, I recommended full funding for that one. Me too. The 4,600. She had some interesting some interesting proposals. Okay, any, any other discussion on that? No. Okay, Chris, you have to excuse yourself from this next one. Gnome Incorporated, Surf Culture and Happiness in, in the Community. And I'm just I going to- I can answer any questions if you have any. <laughs> I'm just going to inform the council that all of the disclosure forms from Chris and from the rest of you for this application have been sent to the mayor's office and have been forwarded after the, they got there to uh, in the mayor, message that they were forwarded to the city uh, to the city clerk. Okay, thank you. Are we discussing this one now? Yes. <clears throat> I love their overall project. It really is noteworthy. In terms of the services that they provide, I'm still in that quandary between um, some of the components are not necessarily in the arts and cultural domain. Um, Chris might argue with me because he's an artist. Artists will see art <laughs> many places. I, I can I just state something quickly about surfing. Surfing is like dancing. It's a it's a self expression, right? So in its purest form, it is an art. You know what I mean? And there's no better way to build culture than surf culture. 
uh, and we're proving that. I mean, I don't believe people to truly understand that, but we're proving that in what we're doing with the growth of the program and the kids that we're affecting where we went from 800 to 2400 mm -hmm. in just one summer, you know? So I'm very impressed with the work, Chris. I know you are. Um, mm -hmm. I am too. But I was thinking, of, and again, this is tentative, right? We can revisit this. I was thinking of 5,000, which would be for the two yoga instructors and the two art instructors. Oh, that's what uh, that's what I had with the plus sign was 5,000. We also employ photographers, which should be included in there. I don't know why it wasn't. Can we do 5,000 with a plus sign to vi yes. revisit? Actually, I'd like to do seven and include the photographers. Okay. I'm okay with that. Don, are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay, no, who, I'm sorry, who was that for now? The photographers and salaries for yoga, art, and photographer and videographer. Thank you. And in terms, I'm going to say this now ahead of time. Um, in terms of revisiting, I would look at the area for the uh, adaptive surf instructors just mm -hmm. because of what they do, it is a form of art. Okay, so we, you still wanna leave the plus sign there with the 7,000? Absolutely. Okay, okay. All right, all right, Chris, you can come back on. Um, number 20, Greater Fall River Symphony Society, the Fall River Symphony Orchestra 21-22 season. Mm -hmm. Again, this is... Um, can I go on a tangent? Sure. So there, there, there are a few organizations who put on large scale performances. And when I say large scale, I include the price for putting it on, the number of people who attend these events. <clears throat> and we have some of the organizations, and, and for example, the symphony, Little Theater, Maki Theater Productions, On Stage Theatrical Productions. You know, so those are big projects that need some help. Some of the organizations rely more on volunteers who don't get any reimbursement. So there's some variations across the groups. Um, and in my head, as I was toying with the fact that we only have 44% of what the total requested by the collective number of applications that we have, um, we need some limit. So I was thinking in the range of 10,000 for these organizations, and with respect to our only symphony in the city, um, I was thinking of full funding of the 8,000 that they requested. Even though their total costs are much higher, total cost for the conductor, soloist, musicians, concert master is, is 14,675. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. I agree That's with what good. you're saying. I agree. You know, it, it, it is our, our symphony, the Fall River Symphony Orchestra, and they, they you know, they do several performances and, and they, I think, I think you're right. They, they do deserve to get a good chunk of, of money. Anybody else? Okay. I agree. 8,000. It is. Uh, number 21, Chainsaws, Chainsaws, Cheeseburgers, and Rock and Roll Live, uh, Jesse Green. And they got high recommendations from um, the 
people from the um, alternative school. I just wish they they would do more with the um, the general population. Sounds like he's somebody that they could they could use it across the system. Anybody? I was thinking full funding of the 500. Yeah. Anybody else? No, oh, that's it. Chris, are you good with that? I'm good. Okay. Uh, number 22, Andrew Harms, folk jazz and film music for trumpet and piano. No specific data nope. venue. No, no, no venue, no, no date. So I, no. I said zero, which is too bad. Well, you know, too, um, one of the things was also the location. Because it's going to add to an existed funding tour that includes Needham, Brookline and Chatham. Yeah, he hasn't um, mentioned Fall River. Right, right. So I, you know, I had a, a slight issue with that. Um, so I would say zero. Okay. Number 23, Anton Hendricks, visual art around the community. What's he gonna do? Not sure what he's gonna do. He says whenever and wherever he sees inspiration. Yeah, I had, I had very- to come. And who's gonna see the inspiration? When is this gonna happen? I mean, this is a grant. <laughs> At the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the end of the day, you know, I can do whatever I can with whatever is granted to me. Um, I, you know, his his application is very vague. Multiple visual art pieces throughout the city. Um, Again, they have no where. No, you can't just no. Put up so, a piece of artwork for the no city. No dates, no venues. No. Or specific, or specific project. So the idea that he wants to pursue should be listed in the application. Exactly, exactly. Okay, zero funding? Yes. Yeah. Okay, next one. Um, Jameson, Scott Jameson, Magic at the Library. And I recommended full funding. Okay, I agree. Agree. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, Timothy Kane, all together drumming. Again, taking place at the library. It, he says he's willing to do it for three hundred and fifty dollars. It's a bargain. I know. <laughs> I, I recommended the four fifty, even though he said he he would do it for willing to go down in price for three fifty. <laughs> I know, I know. He shouldn't shoot himself in the foot like that. No, no, I recommend it. That's exactly it. what I thought when I read it. I said, oh my gosh, you're kidding. No, I recommend it. Right. Full funding. I think we should have a drum circle someday down at South Shore Beach, Chris. I agree. Well, well, yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can get him to do it. Okay, uh, number 26, Lafayette Durfee Historical Foundation. 18th century living history, domestic and military. And it sounds like they're gonna have that during the course of the year and they've got their own location. Right, they're, it sounds like it's an ongoing ongoing exactly. thing. I know they have several projects going on, you know, different holidays and... Mm -hmm. I would just, you know, if they're doing separate projects in relation to this, just I would like to see the Cultural Council get notification of some of the dates. Although I know everything is going to be there and, you know, existing at the uh, Durf Lafayette, Lafayette Durfee House. So I was going to recommend full funding. I recommended full funding as well. I think it's another one of those, those nice things that, this, you know, the city has has to offer. Uh, can, can we ask something of them though? Because the, their primary announcement vehicle is a newsletter to paid members. 
I think we should be notified so that we could help spread the news as, okay. as well as can, just know what they're doing. Can we put that in their letter, Debbie? Already notified. Already made note of it. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, I mean, I mean, number 20. Everybody Whoops. should be doing that for us. I think everybody should be doing that for us because it, it provides content for our Facebook page and it's not so stale in between posts. Is when these events go off, we should be letting people know right yeah. through there. Like we can help market for them through our page, so to say. Maybe maybe that's a, a something that should be added, Debbie, to the letter that goes out to everybody that, you know, please notify us of upcoming events so we can give you some free publicity in exchange. You know, we ask them to put our logo on, but I think we also need to ask them to, to notify us. So like Chris said, um, we can put it on our, our Facebook page. Um, number 27. Alex, them do send me an email, so I just don't put it on the Facebook page. I'm going to have to get with Chris on that. Yeah, you can just forward it to me and I'll make a post about it. I'll figure it out. It's easy enough. Easy for you, Chris. Yeah, that's it's just trying to get hard for me too on social media. <laughs> like uh, you, you, you put a you put a lot. Of, I see a lot of you on social media, on uh, on both Facebook and Instagram. We're just yeah. asking. We're just asking for one. That, that's it. Um, number twenty-seven. Alex left. Cycle of memory. If I read it correctly, that project's already done. It sounds like it's already done. They're asking for a screening event, but I don't see any specifics in the proposals about what's involved in the screening event. No, there's nothing about um, a specific time or, or venue. Um, Correct. I, I, I said zero. No, no specifics, no time, no venue. Me too. I agree. Okay, okay. number 28, um, Christine. Mavitra, my roots are here, an homage of gratitude to the Fall River Art Association. No, she has a date uh, at the Art Association for her presentation. So she's got the venue, she's got the time. I was looking at her as an individual artist. I was too, because yeah. she doesn't list who the artists are. And her proposal is, is a $4,000 stipend for them. That's for other people than, than she, correct? Well, I wasn't sure about that because she was talking about doing, um, the only place that she talk, talked about other artists, I'm including some talented mus musicians who will be playing at my reading. But she was talking about doing a, a, a sculpture and then mm -hmm. talking about it. So I thought she was the artist and the other stipends would be going to the musicians who were going to play at her reading. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at her more as an individual artist. I did too. Okay. So $2,000? 2000 is fine. <clears throat> um, Number 29, Little Theater of Fall River, a mall in the night visitors operating expen expended expenses, excuse me. In terms of the fact that we, our total allocation is 44% of the total, I set a maximum in my mind of 10,000 for those organizations I discussed earlier. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. 10,000 works for me. Well, because just, you know, if you look at their salaries and fees, and then you look at the royalties, the royalties alone are $3,600, 3660 So if right. you combine that with the um, salaries and fees for the musical directors and musicians, you're, you're pretty close to, you're over $9,000. Yeah. So 10,000? Now, do we want to put a limit on the specific areas where they're going to spend the money? No, I think that just gets too complicated for. Okay. All right. 
Okay. Am I right, Debbie? You need some kind of proof that it was spent on that project. Absolutely. Otherwise, I can't give them the money. Yeah. So, so I think ten thousand. It's after COVID to give these organizations money because they've been having to pay their heat and utilities. Then, mm -hmm. if your intent is to give them the full amount, then the stipulations yeah. just get in the way. Well, we're saying ten, ten thousand, not yeah. the full amount, just the ten. But yeah. Well. Okay. Uh, number thirty. Vin Vincent Lovegrove, Bubbles in the Park. I would give him the 2000 as a stipend. I know he's working with recreation according to the application and he's looking at uh, doing that at 10 different locations. So if we give it to him as a stipend and I think that's his intent. I'm okay right. with that. I'm okay with that too. And everybody loves Vinny. Everybody loves Mr. Bubbles there, so. Okay, number 31. Uh, Gregory Mychek, um, the jellyfish, fish how to pastel paint. And he's asking for $662 and I support that amount. I do as well. Me too. Okay. Uh, Marquis Theaters, Legally Blonde the Musical. Well, with what Don's proposal was the $10,000 that we give him the 10. I'm okay with that. You know, he's got a lot of expenses and his his productions are always very well done, very well attended, very well mm -hmm. thought out. I would say the 10. Okay. Uh, number 33, Pamela Means. Pamela Means presents the power of the pro protest song, Our Shared History and Present Day Struggles. She's looking for $950. There's a time and there's a venue. There's a time and there's a venue. And mm -hmm. I thought I thought it, it sounded very it sounded very interesting. I'm okay with that amount. I'm okay with that. Myself as well. Okay, Chris, you all mm -hmm. stop with that? 950. Yep. Um, David Mello from the deep, number 34. Good project. The only thing I thought of not having uh, included was the $120 uh, for the rental issue. On the other hand, we could just give him $2,000 as a stipend. Well, that's what I was thinking too. It's like, is, is this, He's doing this as an individual artist, really. Yes. So $2,000, I think, you know, seems to be our limit on individual artists. And that's not far from the request. No. Yes. Right. So 2000 Yes. Sure. Okay. Uh, number 35, um, Margaret Moody, The Trolls in the Tree um, at Fall River Library Summer Reading Club. I would say uh, full funding. Full funding, $500? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Moving right along. Uh, Musicdance.edu, I am autistic, I am fantastic, the musical. All right. The full funding. I recommended full funding on that one as well. Or 580, because they are getting 100 from the apparent company. Right, I recommended five, five eighty for that. Okay. Okay. The next one is also musicdance.edu, hip hop dance chair exercise for seniors. I wanted to know if I can go to that. You're not a senior. Oh, <laughs> oh yes. Um, thank you so much, Susan. But yes, I am. <laughs> I'm torn on this one, frankly because they are dance instructors, but they're not physical therapists or occupational therapists. I don't know how aggressive they will be with their exercises and the potential of doing harm. They did this project last year and we funded it. And I've got pictures 
they sent me pictures of the at the uh, senior center that they did it in. Oh, okay. So yeah, I would think that if they're, um, you know, they're dance instructors. I know what you're saying, but I think that I don't think the um, nursing home would be offering it because I'm I'm assuming that they're sending some of their residents as well. Um, as it's being offered to community seniors. And I don't think chair, chair hip hop, I don't think you're gonna have so, too many injuries in so, chair hip hop. And they potentially could be working with physical therapists and occupational therapists to de develop their curriculum. I mean, yeah. I, I would hope that they did do some yeah. background work and get some expertise, so to say. Yeah, I agree. And they're asking for 500 because they're getting a thousand a hundred dollars from their parents. So I recommend as a full funding for that. Okay. Um, everybody good with that one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Katrina Myers, Fall River Evening Halloween Parade. Um, I don't want to go first all the time. Anyone else? <laughs> well, I. I I thought it, you know, it sounded like a worthwhile project um, and something that could be a lot of fun. I'm not too sure. There was no place where she indicates that she, I would think you have to get some kind of permits from the city and some kind of um, funding for, you know, police officers. Um, you know, you just can't decide to have a parade and march down Bay Street. Um, so, and there's no list of participants in the parade. There's no details right. regarding who would be in marching. Um, right. They, they claim that they'll be promoting local artists' work, but this parade is aimed to begin at sunset. So how are things going to be able to be seen very well? And the lighting, yeah. Um, yeah, they, she did mention that the parade... Um, Participants will be directed to utilize light in their entries. You know, I'm thinking back to several years ago when they had one of the um, parades for first, I believe it was first night, they, they had a parade and they had the light up. But what they don't okay. have is approval for the city for a parade on Bay Street. Right. But there will be expenses for police and traffic control. Probably extra lighting. And right. In terms of their cost, it, it seems like more of a financial benefit for their own business pursuits. It's three months rent at Bay Street, licensing, insurance, legal fees, web development, phones. Um, They're probably, you know, when you're dealing with a crowd too, I hate to say it, you've got to get portable toilets, porta johns. So that's yes. all additional expenses that they have to consider. So I don't think it's well thought out or necessary necessary approvals yet. No, I think I I think down the road, you know, if they if this was something that was established, like the um, I know in the past we funded the the children's we've given some funding to the children's parade, um, and some other parades. Not always one of my favorite causes. Um, but I just think this one is it's a brand new it's a brand new thing. There used to be something, Debbie, that we couldn't fund any organization that was not established for more than a year. That's what I'm looking at to see if we still have that. I'm actually looking at that right now. Right yeah, now I thinking. thought it was maybe two years or three even. No, yeah, it, was one, right. it was always one year. It was, it was one year. Else. There was something that you couldn't fund. An organization that was less than a year old. It was starting I think out. that was a state reg for a while. Yeah, I've got to get on the state side again. But it it just I think my my biggest concern was the the fact that there you know there needs to be permits in place and before we you know any think about doing any kind of funding and what are we funding? You know I know in the past we funded when we funded parades we funded bands because then. You know, there was um, performance, the, the performance aspect of it. But 
but there doesn't seem to, you know, this seems to be two individuals that don't have a history of why are they renting a, a building for only three months? They're building in, into an art center. They may be very talented and, and energetic enough to pursue this, but there's just no basis at this point to fund it, in my mind. No. I may be missing it, but I don't see that on the, the, the updated uh, guidelines. Is there anything- They revised in August. Is there anything in the denial? I guess we need a reason for denial and the fact that they don't have any kind of, they, they have their date. but they don't have that date confirmed. And I would think they'd need a confirmation from the city of Fall River. That's correct. There's nothing. You know, they're, they're recommending it take place on October 28th, but there's nothing that to back them to say the project will take place at 505 Bay Street and go down north on Bay Street it would, and without permission from the city, they there yeah, needs to be uh, there do. needs to be some some kind of collaboration or something that says you know we have we've applied to for permits from the city or we need they need permission. I mean, all the funds that we give to all these different artists that perform at the library. We always have a, a letter stating that they are supporting these these artists, but this is there's no support here that this is being okay no, by the city. There's no confirmation letters or anything. No, no. So can we use that as a denial, Debbie, that we don't have any confirmation yeah. as far as a venue? Okay. As far um, as the permits, I can, I'll reword it saying it's the permits that are the problem. The permits. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Without um, seeing really a confirmation of venue without those permits. Okay. Uh, Narrow Center for the um, Arts, Concerts on the City Pier. Don, do you want to go with the 10,000 on this one as well? That's an idea. Uh, yeah. 10,000 with the plus. It, yeah. In this case, though, it brings a lot of attention to um, the city and benefits a lot of Fall River rights. It's a $120,000 project total. Right. There'll be four different concerts in the summer. And they've got that, they, I guess they're using the new, the new city pier. Um, I don't know if anybody saw that went down this summer, but they did the, um, they had them set, they had groups set up at different spots along the um, boardwalk this past summer because of, of COVID. And it was, a, it was a little bit disappointing that the way they were spread out, I don't think people realized they weren't stopping. So they really, you know, just kind of had passers by. They didn't really have um, audiences per se. It was, it was very, it was very nice, but like I said, it was, and it was it was a hot it was a hot day in the sunshine so they were out in the in the sun with no shade so I think that was a, a downfall but yeah I would say at least ten thousand and and even revisit this unless you want to go a little higher. Uh, I thought what if we did like um, artist fees and since there are four different events you know maybe four thousand dollars per event, which would be sixteen. Yeah. Or is that too much? Uh, well, let's do the 16. And I mean, even then we still could revisit it because of the, you know, the magnitude of this. Yeah, some of these, are, we might want to decrease when we revisit too, so. That's true. Okay, so we'll do, we'll do 16. 
Okay, um, number 40, the New Bedford Festival Theater, New Bedford Festival Theater, Summer Academy, Beauty and the Beast, and beyond. See local guidelines. Yeah, I, they are no benefit to Fall River. No benefit, zero. Okay. Um, New Bedford Museum and Art Center, Artmobile um, at the Fabric Festival at the Children's Museum of Greater Fall River. Um, I gave them full funding. I liked it. Yes. So that's a thousand dollars, Debbie. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, number forty-two, New Bedford Symphony Orchestra, um, Young People's no Concert. No benefit to the city. See local guidelines. Zero. Okay. Um, number forty-three, uh, Vanya Marie Novurka Viveris, Backyard Birds and Blooms, Season Two, Sequels Eleven to Twenty. So just like we saw for another artist with two different proposals. Yes. I was thinking individual artists for a total of 2000. And if we need to split it up, we could do that. A thousand and a thousand. So number a thousand for number 43. 40. And, and a then thousand for moving on to number 44 artists and influence. Um, yes. Again, as an individual artist, a thousand. Yes. Everybody in agreement with that? Yep. Okay. Number 45, Passport to History, Old County Historical Society. They're looking for $3,000. $300. Uh, $300, I'm sorry. I'm getting crazy here. Um, I think we funded them before because the, it's a passport program. That are, yes, are those. and I think for the $300, I mean, they serve a lot of individuals and they do, they do use, um, you know, some of our local areas. I think there were, um, was it the Historical Society and someplace else? The uh, Lafayette Durfee. Lafayette Durfee mm -hmm. House. Yeah. Yeah, so I said the full, full $300. Uh, number 46, Sheila Oliveira, Contemporary Portraiture of Historical Personages. Oops. I thought individual artist. Individual artist, $2,000. Yes. Okay. Um, number 47, Onstage Theatrical Productions, Rebuilding Step by Step, Back to the Theater. And this is another one, Don. I know. I, Are you good for Chen on this one? That's what I have here. Yes. Yeah, because she and Mark here are two are two biggest, you know, along with some, you know, this um, symphony and other things. So I think you're right. Uh, number forty-eight, Quickershan River Festival, Partners for a Healthier Community. And he's looking for $5,279. I do like the fact that numerous other groups are participating. It was a strength. Yeah, I was looking at, um, I was looking at the salaries for the artists of um, $2,075 and with a plus sign. Because I wasn't too sure some of his other fees that he was looking at, um, whether or not we could even fund them, like maintaining restrooms, um, printing costs, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts? No, I'm okay with that. All right. I'm okay, um, I'm okay with that as well. Next one. Um, Can you repeat the amount, please? 2075. 2075. Okay, next one. Um, practice best practice, practice best practice workshops. And again, I looked at this one and I wasn't quite sure whether or not this was of any benefit to Fall River. I had the same quandary. There's no evidence that Fall River creatives have participated. 
but they do have a statement that 141 zip codes were represented and the, but there's no plan on how they will reach Fall River Creatives. No, no. I said zero funding. I agree. I looked at that and I mean, you wanna try and give some money to everyone if you can, but just the fact that they stuck in Fall River, I mean, I, I, you know, I looked at and I looked to see if they gave us any background information on, you know, where the folks Fall River, how they got there, et cetera, there's nothing, so. Nothing, no, I said zero, zero. zero. Okay, number 50, um, John Regan, The Magnificent Mon Monster Circus. Um, I recommended full funding on this one, $400. Yep. Anybody else? No, okay. I agree. Seven hours concerts, seven hours 54th anniversary season. I actually have zero. I did too. Me too. There's, there's no date. No benefit. No date, no. no oh, confirmation with the local cable access, which is what they want to do present a previously made recording of 60 minutes of the highlights, but there's no agreement with uh, local cable. No. no, I said I said zero as well. Number 52, uh, South Coast Community Corral, Good Vibrations, a Sensory Experience. I thought 6,000, which would be for the musicians, 12 of them at 500 apiece. Um, that's what I had, 6,000 for musicians. Yes. Yep. Okay. And anybody else, Chris? You good with that? 6,000? Okay. Um, South Coast Open Air Market. Um, South Coast Open Air Market is the project. I said zero, that's not Fall River. That's what no, I mean. but in all fairness to them, um, they do get a tremendous amount of folks coming from Fall River. I've been there a few times and run into a lot of people that I know. Right. So I, I'm just looking at maybe we give them, you know, maybe 2000. I think it's a bad precedent. Why don't we okay. give money to the New Bedford Festival? Hmm. Since some fall river rights go there. Okay. You know, I agree. I agree. I think All it's right. a bad precedent. I think it's All a right. bad precedent to set. I, you know, I know they do, they do draw a lot of people from fall river, but I think it, a it is a, okay. a bad. Um, South coast spring arts, um, South coast spring arts. That's in Marion. And I, I wrote actually my notes, I have zero. Uh, there was a reason why I was going to give them money. One of the letters I, of support is from Viva Fall River, though. That oh, was why I think I gave them the, they were only asking okay. for 250. And I think that was why I gave them the 250 because they did have some. Um, You're right. And they actually have somebody on the steering committee from Fall River. So, unlike some of the other organizations. And I think what they do is they promote, I think it's more of a promotional um, program throughout the, the South, South Coast region. Okay. Chris, how do you feel? I'm okay with 250. If it's gonna help artists. Yeah, 250. Um, Number 55, Spectrum Empowerment Project, The Jungle Book Junior. I looked at it that we would give them the money, the full funding, the $1,500. Yeah. And even I though mean, I, I had a thousand, but. Okay. And I had the full funding too. I know it's taking place at White's, but it seems like they're using, um, you know, using the spectrum. Yeah. And yeah. And they needed a venue. They needed a venue. Yeah, that was that was what was I guess was available, but I thought it was an interesting um, 
I thought it was an interesting project. And I, I recommended the full funding for 1500. So John, what'd you say, a thousand? Yeah, but I'm okay with the 1500. I'll, go with the 15. I'll stick with the 15. Chris? 15's good. 15's good, okay. Um, number 56, Super Flat New Bedford Hummingbird Project. No local. No Nothing. local. No I local. Zero. Um, Wendy Tanner, River Rocks. Um, no, there was no venue. There was no no dates, no venue. Well, those rocks are placed all over the city. Right. But I wasn't exactly sure where she would be doing these. Like where would, it sounded like she wanted to have like workshops where people would come and paint them and then place them. So what are we paying for? Because I can paint a rock and put it any place. <laughs> Maybe, um, could we have some clarification from her on that? On exactly, you know, what they're gonna do? Because it doesn't really, it doesn't really say where she's doing it. River Rocks has done 20 free community events, but she didn't put anything in. And then she put in space rental um, to do events inside when the weather is cold, but she didn't talk about where or what. Okay. I just thought it was very vague. Does she have a studio? Didn't, I didn't sound like it. Like where are they painting even, even, does, does she set up a table someplace at some of these events? Because she did say Viva Fall River allowed them to have events at their location and any events they put on, but. I believe they did some sort of like workshop where they said that there was some funding available from the local cultural council. I don't know if they really dove deep into what our priorities are and what we expect from the local artists. So maybe we, one of us has like next time around, like at least hops on that call. And mm -hmm and like tries to explain what it is that we're looking for. Uh, because I feel like a lot of these applications are coming from that little cohort, um, which I have no problem funding. It's just we need a little more information, I would think. Right. Well, I think unfortunately because of COVID, we haven't been able to do like our little workshop. Yeah. You know? Maybe that's, maybe that's- I, a, I know the state next. does it virtually, but maybe we, we put something in. I don't mind doing it either. No, like, I think you're right, Chris. You know, we're in the fall before the, they stop filling out applications, even if we did, you know, a Zoom, a Zoom workshop. Um, that would prevent a lot of these like- Great idea. Issues. I, think, I think it's something we need to look at for next year. I agree. Okay. And so maybe I, we just make a recording and like send it to people like who will inquire about more information. You know what I mean? It doesn't need to be anything too elaborate, co complicated, or cost as much of anything. No, because we do have we did have a hand we did have a handout that we used to put out um, basically that had all our, our list of our requirements, et cetera. And we could probably revisit that, you know, at some point and, and come up with a, a list of things that need to be on an application, but I just think this one is too vague. And she's asking, she's not, she's asking for $5,000. That's a substantial amount. It is. Okay, so what's um, everybody's feeling on this one? I said zero. It's not a, it's not a venue. It's specified. She's not giving any specific places where the. Um, no, the I agree. Zone. Do you want to go with zero? Zero. Um, Coalition for Buzzards Bay, Discover Buzzards Bay, Fall River. 
Asking for a thousand dollars. And again, there's no plans to incorporate Fall River residents, so it's not a local priority. Actually, though, it, it does say in the application that they're going to partner with uh, the uh, Freetown Fall River State Reservation hikes. And uh, Michael Labossier is a state forester from Fall River. So, I mean, that's all it says as a partner. I mean, on the other hand, when you think of Buzzards Bay, Fall River is actually not part of Buzzards Bay because we're Mount Hope Bay. Right. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was of the same feeling that we're not part of Buzzards Bay. And it does say bordering towns like Westport and Dartmouth as far as where the project would take place, which also tells me that they would be more geared towards probably Westport and Dartmouth than coming all the way to Fall River. Right, right. So I was all over the place with this one. Yeah, I was too, but then I, I came up with zero because I wasn't, I think yes. it's, it's not our, no, of no, no benefit to Fall River. No, it's at least it's not enough benefit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next one, Fall River Art Association student art classes. I think it's an investment in a pool of artists in the city to begin training early. I like the idea. Yeah, I did too. I did too. They're asking for, um, they were asking for 20,000. I, I suggested, I, my recommendation was 5,000 for supplies. I had 7,400 because I also added the weekly art classes for 2,400. Okay. So 7,400? And we can revisit that if that's too, you know, if that might be too much. Okay. okay. 74. Okay, Thomas Chu Memorial Boys Club, their arts program. They're asking for 3,000. Yeah, I recommended the 3,000. Absolutely. You know, they do a lot. They do a lot with the kids there. Um, I had a couple of concerns though. So last year, they only had 10 youths participate. Again, that was because of COVID. Right. Um, my understanding is that it's taught by a current, that the art classes are currently taught by a college student. And it's not even clear that that student is an art major. And the artist fees are projected to be 4,200. I think that's pretty much though what they have done every year. No, I, a couple of, in the past they they actually had um, what was the gentleman's name that used to teach the art classes at the boys club? James K. Yeah. James K. Taught them. Am I right, Debbie? Right. Yes. Yeah, yes, we went to a lot of the exhibits there. Yeah, because they used to do an exhibit, and I, obviously they didn't have one last year, probably because of COVID, but I know in the past they had a, a large number of students that participated. Yeah, the, the, the hallway walls were covered with right. all the different artwork from all the students. And some of it was, some of it was amazing. So I'll read that. The specific concern, the arts program will be taught by a staff member who is a current college student and has been the program assistant for the past two years. Additionally, she's a former club member who participated in the arts program for several years. The club will also continue to seek students who are art majors at Bridgewater State University or UMass Dartmouth, as well as volunteers from the Florida School Department. I just had the feeling that maybe we're paying paying the st a staff person. Oh, how about if we give them fifteen hundred for supplies and materials? I'm fine with that. 
Okay. You, with that? you want that a, a stipulation? Yes, supplies and materials. Okay, number 61, uh, children's songs and singing games, Roger Ticknell, $600. I said, I said the full funding on that one. Okay. Can we pay for travel? <laughs> I'm forgetting which rules get changed. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think that one went out the window too. Um, it did with the state. Let me just double check ours. Or a cultural council does not pay for transportation cost or sh oh no that's I'm sorry this is for, uh, the other one it is not on our regular one it's only for the field trips for the field trip so we can pay for that so six hundred okay okay um, number sixty two Chief Chow Toku. Building a creative mind through African dance for individual mental health and community growth. No data venue. No data venue. So zero. Uh, Devin Torres, uh, Cafe Interwoven. Again, there was no data venue on that one. It was a radio show. Well, I, I was tempted to fund this, but with a strong stipulation because. Um, the request is for WSAR's recording fees for the program. Right, that was that was my, here. yeah, I do have another note there about recording fees and radio advertising. So why are we paying for the studio programming fee? That's recording the project, right? Correct, it says, Cafe Interwoven is asking the floor of a cultural Cultural Council for $2,000 to secure the seed funding for WSAR's recording fees. Rhonda Razio and Devin Torres will be donating their time and services. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure we should be paying for radio time. Yeah, I don't think so either. Yeah. That can kind of be considered marketing to an extent, right? Yeah, and and you know most I mean most radio shows you don't pay for anything. You don't pay for anything because they Especially have WSAR. They have sponsors. You know they have right commercial sponsors. <clears throat> but th there is a potential benefit for a mission. Um, let me read the overall purpose. It's a radio show that aims to unite the South Coast region over the topics of culture, arts, food, entertainment. And it's going to be hosted by somebody we fund, Rhonda Fazio. Who, right. Who will serve as a catalog to the current arts and cultural events across the South Coast and will feature interviews with local artists. I thought it was I thought it was a, a good idea. I just wasn't sure it was something we should be funding because basically we're not paying for their time, we're paying for radio time. Right. If we're talking food, entertainment, this is something Yeah, I don't like that part, but as much as I do the cultural events. Uh, but what so, I'm saying is it could be funded by those food and entertainment places that. Right, know, that right. Home. Well, and not only that, but I think the radio station looks for, do we even have a commitment from the radio station that they're willing to, to do this? Um, Cause I know they have, um, there's a show it used to be, I haven't listened to WSAR in a while. I used to listen to it when I was in the car. Um, I don't spend as much time in the car as I used to. There used to be, uh, I can't remember her name. And it's somebody that we probably all know if I said it. And she used to be on, I believe, Friday afternoons. And she'd always talk about what was coming up that weekend with local events and cultural type things. And she would Kathy have different. Castro? Was it what Kathy? was that? 
Was it Kathy Castro? Yes, that's exactly who it was. That's exactly who it was. I don't know if she's still on, but she did something similar where she would have different artists. Sometimes she'd have people from um, the Narrow Center or she'd talk about what was going on. She, she'd talk about different events that were going on. I don't know if she still does it. Um, she, but, does it on, she does it on BCC television right now. Oh, does she? But that was a, a similar thing. And I just, you know, I mean, there were advertisements, there were commercials on her radio show. I'm just not too sure that it does say a letter of support will be coming from WSAR, but. Didn't it, was that one of the letters that I sent everybody? I the attachments? Think, I don't think so. I don't think so. No. No? It's not one of them. Okay. Okay, I'm okay with passing on that one. But we okay. need to give Debbie a reason. Mm -hmm. The venue is not confirmed. Yeah. yeah. All right, that's a good one. Okay, uh, number 64, Townhouse Clubhouse, Townhouse Mural and Art Show. Uh, there's two parts. There's a request for supplies. And I did like the part where they are planning to do a mural on the back of the townhouse building. Right. So that kind of confirms the availability of the outside wall for the mural. I think I, I think I, I gave them full funding because I thought I thought it was a worthwhile project. And we did fund them last year. How about two thousand for supplies and two thousand if the mural is completed? They can't have any money unless the the project's completed by the guidelines. No one can have too, money. Is correct, but there's the mural is one of the two um, projects. So you're saying give them $4,000, but if... The stipulation is that half of it has to be for the mural being completed. Yeah, Debbie, the way they've got the supplies and materials broken down is they're la asking for $2,000 for supplies and materials for art projects, classes, and workshops. And then they're asking for another $2,000 for supplies for items relating to the mural. Okay. So can we give them 2,000 for their supplies for their workshops? And then the other 2,000 if the mural is complete? Yes, we can. Does that right. make sense to everybody? Yes, that's fair. Okay, number 65, Tri County Music Association, complimentary senior tickets. I said zero, no, zero. no, no benefit to Fall River residents. Right. Okay, uh, Viva Fall River, FRACC slash Viva Fall River Community Events. They were asking for $25,000. Kind of had them in the $10,000. I had them in the 10,000. That's exactly what I had done was $10,000. I agree. Uh, Kurt Whipple, between January and December 2022, 2022. And that was one of the things that you, there was a miss. Um, that was one of the letters that you sent, Debbie. Right. Yes, he couldn't get the attachment onto uh, onto the, the new MCC website, and it, there was two letters on that. Yeah, there were two letters on on that one. 
One was a correction and one was a letter, I think. Yeah, one was one was the correction. And the other one is the letter from um, For the Media, Channel 95. And, yeah, and support and confirmation. I was confused about the Zoom meeting. How will that be publicized and how will that be organized? Right. And they do have they do have it on local local cable and we did get the confirmation. Um, mm -hmm. So and this is for uh, <clears throat> A performance that's already been recorded. They're just allowing the community to watch it. It's almost like a license. So I was thinking a thousand for the license because I'm not sure the viewership of Channel 95. Right. Maybe 500 for the Zoom meeting. So 1500. Okay. So. Okay. Hundreds. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's, it's a complication, but could we put break that down so that if they don't do the Zoom meeting, they won't get the total fifteen hundred? Yeah, I think so, Debbie. Because we'd be we'd be doing the same thing. Um, so can thousand, you give me the amounts then? A thousand for license for the licensing right and. 500 for the Zoom meeting. Okay. Uh, number 68, Matt York's uh, Songs and Stories, The Highwaymen. And I had zero for that since it's no. No date. Or venue. No date, no venue. Right. And last one, Robert Zamarchi, Elijah T. Grasshopper and Friends, $800. There is a letter of support from David Mello saying yeah, that they a letter. work out a date. Yeah, that yeah. they would be working, they would be working that out. So I was funded. fully funded. Okay. I've seen a lot of grasshoppers in Costa Rica when I just went, so a good sign. <laughs> Found it. Good, good. So Debbie, what are we up to? We have have overspent by two hundred seventy four dollars. Oh, so we have to take two hundred seventy five four dollars away from someone or some or multiple people. If we were going to stay consistent, I have a different thousand, Debbie. Pardon? Probably should check our numbers because I have a different number. Okay. I have that we spent 1000, $141,596. Is that what you have? No, I have 134000 We have a guess. <laughs> okay. Um, All right. Do we want to take a break? So we can go over the numbers from the recording. Can we do that? You can. You can. Okay. Add, you, you can, can we take just, a vote. What if we just check each other's? That de de we could do that in like two minutes. Okay. All right. I was just saying, thinking rather than recording it. Number one is zero. Two is a thousand. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I don't have my my screen up here. Okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Zero. Zero, two is a thousand, three is a thousand, four is zero, five is zero, six is zero. Mm -hmm. Seven, four fifty. Mm -hmm. Eight, two thousand. Nine, thirty five hundred. Right. Ten, two thousand. Eleven, three thousand. Twelve, five hundred. Thirteen, three thousand. 
fourteen five ninety nine fifteen two thousand sixteen zero seventeen nineteen thirty eighteen forty six hundred nineteen seven thousand plus with a plus so mm -hmm. um forever number twenty eight thousand twenty one five hundred twenty two zero 23 0, 24 550, 25 450, 26 3000, 27 0, 28 2000, 29 10,000, 30 2000, 31 662, 32 is 10,000, 33 950, 34 2000, 35 500. 36, 580, 37, 500, 38, 0, 39, 16,000, 40, 0, 41, 1,000, 42, 0, 43, 1,000, 44, 1,000, 45, 300, 46, 2,000, 47, 10,000, 48, 20, 75, 49, 0, 50, 400, 51, 0, 52, 6,000, 53, 0, 54, 250, 55, 1,500, 56, 0, 57, 0, 58, 0, 59, 7,400, 60, 1,500, 61, 600, 62, 0, 63, 0, 64, 4,000, 65, 0, 66, 10,000, 67, 1,500, 68, 0, 69, 800. Exactly what I have. Hmm? That's exactly what I have. Let me just. Let me check my formula. Um, all right. You just highlight the column. Should the sum should be at the bottom? Yeah, so my my summation is 134,596. My summation is 141,596. How does that work? Let me just go over to another column. I just did it in another column. I'm getting the same amount done. Okay, so we have 140. What'd you say, Debbie? 140 what? I my total that I from today is 1,140. I'm sorry, 141 596 dollars. And we have $1,041,322 to spend. But it's the total of what we spent today that he and I are having a discrepancy on. And I think I know my error is that we, we put 7,000 plus. So this oh. equation may not be putting the 7,000 in there. Oh, I don't put the, yeah, I put the plus in a different column. Yep, yeah, it's 141.596. Correct. So that was my error of putting a plus. It ignored that amount. Okay. Um, all right, so we have to remove $274. Well, before we remove $274, we also need to go back and look at um, the narrows. We need to go back and look at number 16 because we 
put her on hold. Oh, um, Tarina. The Art and Language of Food, Rhonda Fazio. Well, I still I'd like zero because we treated all the other um, <clears throat> artists who had two proposals as individual artists and we made it 1,000 and 1,000 for this other one. Well, we could do that. We could treat, we could go back and, and only give her $1,000 for her proposal on number 15 and give her $1,000 on number 16. Okay. Or, correct? Yeah, I'm yeah. not particularly I, comfortable with, with funding health promotion. Well, could we, could we do, could we do, give her 1,500 for um, the artist in residence interwoven heritage and give 500 to the food one. Yes, that's a great idea. How does that sound? Sounds good. Okay, so we're going to give her a thousand, fifteen hundred, Debbie for, mm -hmm. and then five hundred for uh, food. Okay. I just want to touch on something too. If we're if we're putting a ten thousand dollar cap, like we said, somewhat, so to say, on certain organizations, then we need to take that into account with the narrows as well. And I understand there's four different concerts that we're, we're talking about here, but there's organizations that are doing, uh, you know, 120 days straight of services, so to say. So, yeah. you know what I mean? Like $16,000 is a lot of money to give to one organization, in my opinion. But if you guys feel strongly enough about that, I'll, I'll step away. But no, I hear you. Yeah. And I kind of agree with that. And pop. being a nonprofit leader, like, you have to ensure that your funding comes from different areas, right? So it's very heavy on us on that. Mm -hmm. And I love what they do. Like that's not I'm very supportive of that, but that's way outside any anywhere else. Um, historically, going way back, we used to fund when the Narrows first started having entertainment and they requested funding from us, we did fund them for a few years. And as they became independent, we, we stopped. They could fund themselves. Um, I think what hit me about the project on the pier was that the community a lot of people would, would probably benefit from that. Enjoy that. But I'm okay with reducing it if we have to. Well, I think rather than taking any money away from um, anybody else, that seems to be our big, that's our, our big number that mm -hmm. we take we take the money away from, from them. So the 200 and whatever dollars and I don't know how you feel about that but what are we short Debbie 274 dollars 274 dollars I would I would give that take that away from the 16,000 That would give them fifteen thousand seven hundred twenty-six dollars. I'm okay with that. I still think it's really high for one organization. I mean, I know how much I'm spending on my project, and you know, there's a little nitpicking there on, on what we requested. You know what I mean? So. Uh, for, for my organization itself, it costs about $150,000 to run the whole thing. So that's just my opinion, but I'm okay with whatever you guys want to go with.
I think I think we're good with I, I'm good with the fifteen thousand because I think if you look at their their total budget, it's one hundred twenty thousand dollars, and like Dan, Don said, they draw in an awful lot of people from all over all over the place. I'm just thinking of it as an investment to get them started and, you know, then down the road, they'll have to make ends meet if they continue this. Any other discussion? Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to have a motion to accept all these figures. And I'm going to take out number, what number are you, Chris? Seven. 19. 19. Voting on everything except for number 19. I'm gonna take out number 19, which is um, because Chris has to recuse himself from that. So I'd like to make a motion that we accept all the figures with the exception of number 19 as discussed. As discussed. I'll, second that. I'll second that. Okay, can we have a roll call? Any other discussion? Okay. Uh, Mr. Anteo? Yes. Dr. Carlo? Yes. Ms. Cody? Yes. Mrs. Valente? Yes. So that's unanimous. Okay, and now number 19, Chris, you have to um, excuse yourself to accept um, $7,000 for um, Gnome Incorporated Surf Culture and Happiness in the Community. A motion to accept? I'll make a motion that we accept number 19. Second. Any further discussion? Okay, Dr. Carvo? Yes. Susan Cody? Yes. Dr. Mrs. Valente? Yes. Okay. And where is my agenda? Somewhere in the... Okay, any new business? Do we have any, any new business to discuss? No, at least I don't. Okay, so Debbie, these letters have to go out um, shortly, I would assume. I will have them out within the next two days. And then they have up until when to? 15 days to respond. 15 we'll business days on. or 15 calendar days? 15 days, 15 days from okay. the day I send it. So if I send it out on the 17th, they have... Um, until January 1st to respond. Okay. Okay. So we may need and to I have believe, a... Yeah, I think there's a change. They have to send their request up to Boston now. Okay. So then we would we would have to have another meeting. Correct. If, if anyone does this, yes, we would have to have another meeting okay. in January because we have to have these in. I don't think they've changed the end. I don't think they've changed the January deadline for us to have this in, but I could be wrong. They may have extended it when they extended the application deadline. Now, do we need to do anything? I think, you know, there was a suggestion made that we have a, um, some kind of an outline to either do a tape or do a, a pre uh, application meeting like we've done in the past, like a workshop. Um, we, can, we can set up a workshop anytime we want. Okay, okay. It, it might be better if it's closer to the uh, actual applications. We didn't, right. we didn't push a workshop this year because we didn't know what the uh, website was going to be. And okay, uh, so we can we can take that up and we can take that up in the in the summertime or in the fall. Okay, um, do we have any other new business? Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Uh, Mr. Anteo. Roll yes. Roll. Dr. Curva? Yes. Ms. Cody? Yes. Mrs. Valente? Yes. And thank you all for, for coming, and I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday. 
You too. You too. Thank you.